Hiya. Um, so in this section, we're going to do something a little bit differently. Um, we're going to look at um, something called bilinearity. Uh, and this is something you should have heard in linear algebra if you've done linear algebra before. Um, and this is actually where linearity for expectation kind of comes in. So I kind of want to cover this, uh, mainly because I think it'd be helpful for other classes as well to kind of see where this comes from and how this kind of works in a different setting um, and where this term linearity even comes from for expectation. I know it's a definitely weird term. So basically what we had, um, and let me kind of set up the scene. So what we had um, for expectation is we said that the linearity of expectation is this function. We have this. Um, and this is actually coming from the term linear, which has a very unique meaning in math. Um, and I'm not talking linear functions here. I'm talking about a linear map. So what I mean here is a map F is called linear if it satisfies the following things. We need that f of x plus y needs to be able to split so I can have f of x plus y equal to f of x plus f of y. And if I multiply by some constant, I need to be able to pull the constant out. And you can kind of see this is true for expectation, right? Like remember how for expectation when we had ax plus by, what we had is a of ex plus b of ey. I can split my function over the plus and I can bring the constants out in front. But this is true for a lot of things. So if I have my, uh, for example, I have a function 2x, like some map 2x, well, this is true for this as well, right? So if I do f of x plus y, well, this is 2 of x plus y. This is 2x plus 2y, which is equal to f of x plus f of y. Uh, this is also true with the constant, right? So if I do a times x, well, this is 2 times 2 of ax. Um, I can just commute these variables, a times 2x. So I have a of f of x. So you can kind of see this is true for a lot of functions. And these are called linear maps. So you can look it up on Wikipedia if you want. Uh, but these are called linear maps. Um, and the thing is, sometimes we have maps that have two variables, right? Like covariance. Covariance, if you recall, we said x and y. Similarly with cor correlation, right? We had x and y. So I, we have two variables instead of just one. And now the question becomes, well, can we do linearity in both terms. Um, and so this is where bilinearity comes from. It's saying, well, can I take this function that has now two variables and is it linear for both of the things? Um, and it turns out for some things, yes, for other things, no. So let's look at, at an example. For example, if I take f of x, y, so I have two variables and I look at two x, y. Um, so to do this, we need to check all the variables. So let's do f of, I guess we'll need x plus z of y. So this is 2 times x plus z y. This is equal to 2x y plus 2 z y, which is equal to f of x y plus f of x, uh, f of z y. So yes, we are able to take this plus and flip it into a plus outside. So we can take the plus out. And you should be able to see that we can do the same thing for the y. x of y plus z, you can see this is going to be equal to f of x, y plus f of x, z. Uh, you can play around with it to double check if you don't believe me. Uh, but we also need to check the constant term, right? So let's break this down and look at the constant term. And we'll say ax. We'll do both at the same time. Why not? Um, no, nah, it's okay. We'll do y. And notice here how this gives me 2 times ax times y. And here again, by commute, I can commute things. 2, I can bring the a in front. a times 2xy. So I have a times f of x, y. And obviously in a similar manner, a, x, a, y, I can bring this a in front too. So you can see this is where bilinearity comes from. It doesn't matter which of the terms I look into, I can split in the normal way. Now, not everything is bilinear, 
right? Let's, so this needs to be true for both terms. But let's look at an example where this is not true for both terms, but it's true for maybe one of them. So let me define a map, f of x, y. And in this case, I'm going to look at division, x divided by y. And in this case, f is linear in the first term, but not in the second. And let's see. Um, if I have f of um, x plus z divided by n, y, here this is x plus z divided by y. Here, remember, I can split these up, right? Because the addition is on the top. So I get x, y plus z over y. And this is f of x, y plus f of z, y. Uh, and similarly, I can do multiplication, right? So f of ax, y. This is ax over y. And so we get um, a times x, y, which is a of f of x, y. So it's nice. Okay, well, let's try it in the second second case for y. f of x, y plus z. Okay, what's this equal to? We have x of y plus z. And you should right away be like, because you can't do anything. This That's it. So this is definitely not equal <laughs> to f of x, y plus f of x, z, right? This is a common mistake that most of you probably did back in the day, right? Where you did x of y plus x of z, right? These two are not equal to one another. You can't just split on the bottom. Similarly, let's see what happens if I do um, multiply by a for y. Here we have x over a y, right? So I'm doing a y. Well, in this case, I have one over a x over y. So I actually have, I can make my function again. So I have f of x y, but now I have one divided by a instead of a. Um, oops, there we go. One divided by a instead of a. So what I have is this is not equal to a times f of x y. And so it's linear in the first term, but it's not linear in the second term. And so this function would not be bilinear. Now the cool thing, uh, and the, the last page of your notes, I'm sure you're all super happy, um, is that covariance is bilinear. So in other words, covariance of x plus y of z, I guess we should keep the same things from before, z of y. This is equal to the covariance of x of y plus the covariance of a z of y. And you can do the same thing for the second term, y plus z, covariance of x, y, plus covariance of x, z. And you can do the constants, covariance of a, x, y is equal to covariant a, a times covariance of x, y. And you can do this for the second term as well. a y is equal to a times covariance of x y. Uh, so this is something that's super strong uh, and super useful for a lot of things. Um, we won't go over an example for this, uh, mainly because I really like having just this uh, on the last page. So I didn't want an example. Um, but it's a, it's a kind of nice way to wrap up to show a nice little property for covariance, we're not going to show this. You can prove it if you want. Um, you just have to use the e, the, the definition to prove it. Uh, but I think this is a nice way to wrap up. Um, thank you for the amazing semester this year. Um, it's been a lot of fun. We've had some ups and downs, some difficulties, but some easy things too. Um, it was a pleasure teaching you. I had a lot of fun. Um, I guess I'll technically still see you in class for the next uh, week and a half. Uh, but this is technically the last uh, lecture. Um, we're not going to cover anything in week 12. Uh, week 12, the last day of class, I always, always, always leave for review. Uh, so there's never any lecture on the last day of class. Um, this is, I've always done this. Um, so yeah, so week 12 is basically just review week, uh, kind of like how we did week nine. Um, but that was in preparation for the exam. Uh, so this one is just, oh, well, I guess technically preparation for the final exam. Uh, so note, there's no more lectures for week 12. Week 12, I'll probably put um, videos up for practice final exam. Uh, but that's about it.
Um, so yeah, so I'll say goodbye uh, and thanks for the semester. Bye.